Well, summer is approaching, and that means there's no better time to dive back into the water and talk about the Jaws franchise. Today, I'm going to be giving you guys my top 10 kills in the franchise from number 10 all the way to number one. And oh boy, was this a tough one. If you like horror, hit that notification bell, smash that like button, and push that subscribe button now. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Nick Push, talking Jaws today. As I said, top 10 kills in the franchise. Uh, before I get into my top 10, I want to hear your top 10, or at least your top one or two or three. Um, so tell me down in the comments. I love reading what you guys say. And while you're there, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and we're building a great community here, um, and I love to hear everyone's thoughts. So, Jaws, you guys know I'm a huge Jaws fan. I've already reviewed the first two movies last summer, planning on reviewing three and four this summer if I can muster up the courage to watch them although my thoughts on three might surprise you uh, but we're not here to do that today we're here to talk about top 10 kills in the franchise uh, like I said this was tough uh, because if you think about the Jaws franchise you think there's all these kills right there really isn't too many kills for four films you know especially with you know a killer shark running around uh, but a lot of the kills were really really good and really significant so when i get into like numbers like seven through two i really had a challenging time on where to put them because some are just horrifying some are scary as hell some are just you know really meaningful and they pack an emotional punch so it was very very tough for me to rank these but rank them i did and let's get right into it so we're gonna start off at number 10 here guys my number 10 kill, the 10th best kill in the franchise, for me, is the helicopter pilot from Jaws 2. Now, the reason this is at number 10 and say not number 3 is because I think at this point it gets a little too fantastical, right? The shark just attacking a helicopter, bringing it down. Uh, but that being said, it is a badass scene. This scared the bejesus out of me as a kid. Uh, which a lot of these kills did, to be honest with you. Uh, but this one in particular always stood out because it's uh, it packs a punch. You know, the kids are floating along, uh, you know, sailing out in the middle of the ocean, and they're in trouble, and they're saved, right? They, they finally get uh, the chopper to come to drag them to Union Station. He starts cranking up the motor, and then all of a sudden you see this image here. Boom, the shark, and it just takes it down under. And then you got the propeller going back and forth, destroying uh, some of their boats. Uh, just a crazy-ass scene. Really good scene. Like I said, a little too fantastical for me to put it any higher, uh, but it did make the list. It's at number 10. Coming in at number 9, we got to talk Alex Kittner, right? Um, speaking about uh, what I said earlier about packing an emotional punch, I mean, this is when shit got real in the OG Jaws movie. Uh, you know, you think about this scene and what do you think about, you know, for me, it, it always comes down to the emotional punch of the mom slapping Brody and what that meant to Brody. Because it's not really Brody's fault, right? Brody is telling the... Uh, uh, telling the mayor you got to close the beaches, you got to close the beaches, etc., 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 and we know the rest. You know the beaches are going to stay open for Fourth of July, right? Um, but then Alex Kittner gets killed, um, and look at this image here. I mean that is fucking brutal. And just seeing his mom stand there as everyone runs in, and she's standing there looking for her son, uh, and then you see the raft and all that blood uh, uh, come up on the beach. Just, just terrifying. Uh, really, really well done there. So that is number nine. Number eight. It's going to be Tina's boyfriend? Fuck buddy, dare I say? Anyway, you got Tina's Joy out here. Uh, her and curly-haired dude, which doesn't really narrow it down in Jaws 2, right? Uh, but they're sitting there having a little bit of a romantic time. And then uh, the shark comes. And it just knocks the boat. And this guy goes flying. And what I love about this scene... And I really talked about this in depth in my Jaws 2 review, so go check that out uh, after this if you want more, more of my thoughts on this scene. Uh, but what I love about this scene is uh, it knocks him way out there. And as somebody who's went flying off of a jet ski before, uh, in Mexico no less, uh, where I was you know, 50, 70 feet from my jet ski, I'm telling you, that can happen. Uh, when I first saw this, uh, I didn't think that could happen until it happened to me. Luckily for me, there was not a 30-foot shark out there. Uh, but unluckily for curly-haired douche here, uh, he might not be a douche, but he seems like a douche. 
Uh, but unluckily for him, uh, there's a huge shark, and you got it coming on the other side of the boat, and you got Tina saying, swim, there's a shark, there's a shark, and it's just a fucking great scene, and you get the overhead shot of the shark going under the boat as he's going there, and then it just kind of takes his body and throws it against the boat, and he's gone. Uh, just, just a fucking great scene. God damn, I love these movies. Let me rephrase that. God damn, I love these first two movies. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Tina's fuck buddy, boyfriend, whatever you want to call it, is my number eight. Coming in at number seven is going to be Sticking with Jaws 2. We have uh, the shark attacking a water skier. And then we get the water skier's friend, her mom, I don't know. I can't tell how old she is. Uh, but anyway, shark takes out the water skier. This chick finds the empty water ski. And then you get the shark shows up. Boom, nails it. Um, and there's so much to love about this scene. Uh, but look at this image right here. The shark just attacking this small boat in the ocean. Fucking petrifying. Um, and then, you know, we get the uh, the classic scene, which created a classic image of her, you know, dumping the uh, gasoline all over herself um, and firing off the flare gun, blowing it all up. And you get the, the scene then of the shark just kind of floating away on fire fucking fire uh, awesome and it just kind of really ups the ante for the rest of the movie when you see this shark attacking the kids with his half burnt face awesome stuff awesome stuff so that is my number seven still haven't gotten to jaws of revenge still haven't gotten to jaws three i promise you guys they are on the list but there's only one for each of them but they are on the list damn it uh let's get into number six number six for me oh oh speaking of packing an emotional punch this terrified me as a kid um, I don't even know the chick's name, but she's a girl that saved young Sean Brody's life. Um, so, like I said, the kids are floating around, right? And the shark comes. This is after the helicopter scene. The shark comes. Uh, they have all their boats tied up, their sailboats tied up. Shark comes and just destroys that, and they all get knocked everywhere. Mike gets knocked across the ocean. He's floating there in his life jacket. Um, and then you got Sean here who's, I don't know, what is he, seven? Something like that. Um, but he, he goes floating in the water, and this chick is in the water too, and she saves his life. She gets him up on the upside-down boat, um, and then she's trying to get up, and you see the shark coming, and I, I'll never forget the way she says it. She's grabbing up to reach on the boat, and she keeps slipping. Her hands keep slipping, and she, she even says out loud, she goes, I can't get up. I can't get up. And at that point, like, your heart just starts racing, um, and it's just like, and you, it's just crazy. And you see the shark come and you get this image here just right after he devours her, just blood everywhere. And of course you got Sean Brody, young Sean Brody, uh, sitting there, you know, in shock. He is just in fucking shock of what he witnessed. And I don't know about you guys. He's seven years old. You know, I'm much older than that. Um, even at this age, I'd be in shock. I, I'm with you, Sean. I'd be in shock witnessing that. Um, but she went out a hero, saved his life. Like I said, really emotional scene. Um, and really terrifying in Jaws 2. All right, let's get into the top five, people. Like I said, all these are so hard to rank when you get through eight through like two. Uh, but my number five is going to be the OG kill. Um, you know, we don't even see the shark here, and we're terrified. We all know the backstory by now. This came out in 1975, first summer blockbuster. The shark wasn't working, right? Uh, so Spielberg had to get creative. And get creative, he did um, throughout the movie, but specifically in this scene. You know, this actress is, she's A, acting her ass off, and B, I don't really, I heard she's not really acting because they were just pulling and yanking her all over under the water. Uh, and, you know, she, some of her screams, I think, were real. Um, but, you know, you see her go out for a night swim. I can't remember her name. Is it Christy? I can't remember. But she goes out for a night swim and um, she gets killed by the shark. And she gets, like I said, just thrown about in the ocean. She uh, hits the buoy over there um, and then goes under. And that is our introduction to Jaws. Uh, just fucking terrifying scene, especially for not even seeing the shark. All right, number four. Let's hit up Jaws the Revenge. I don't have much good to say about this movie at all, except for this scene. Circling back to Sean Brody. Sean is now a deputy in Amity, and it is Christmas. Yes, Jaws 4, Jaws the Revenge, starts out as a Christmas movie, or at least set during Christmas. Um, but he's going to get some boards or something in the water, um, and he gets fucking killed brutally. He gets his arm ripped off, like you can see here. 
Um, and the kicker of this scene, besides the fact that it's really dark and it's at night, uh, but the kicker of this scene is he is screaming bloody murder for help. But like I said, it's Christmas time, and his screams are drowned out by these carolers right on the shoreline. So as he is screaming bloody murder, these carolers are singing a, a happy Christmas carol, um, and he's then killed. Um, really, really brutal, brutal fucking scene. Um, and easily, I think, in my opinion, the best part of Jaws the Revenge. Which, granted, isn't saying much, but this scene cracked my top five. It's at number four for a reason. It's a really good scene. All right. Top three, people. Did I do it? Did I put a Jaws 3D kill in the top three? Goddamn right I did. Um, can't remember this character's name, but it is the hunter, whether he's a Swedish hunter, he's some type of European shark hunter. And this scene is fucking terrifying to me. Scared the bejesus out of me as a kid again. Um, but essentially, you got this, was that, 35 foot shark in this tank, uh, which is absurd to begin with, anyway. Um, but um, he is going down to do some stuff, trying to, you know, hunt, kill the shark, and he, is, he essentially gets devoured whole by this huge shark. And what I love about this scene, why this is terrifying, um, is he is inside the mouth of that. Look at that. So the camera is showing us essentially, I mean, not really, but kind of his point of view. You can see his arm there, uh, but we see him in the shark's mouth and the shark's mouth is going boom, boom. It's fucking crushing him whole. And look at the size of those teeth. They're like the size of his forearm. Um, and he, you know, he's trying to get out, but he can't. You see blood going and you see he's got like a, like, if he could only swim out of there, I mean, I don't know how, but he'd be fine. But the, it's just crushing him alive. And I love this imagery here of the view from inside the shark's mouth. Now, on, a, on the whole, it's kind of ridiculous, right? He gets swallowed whole by a fucking shark and he's still alive in there for part of the time. Yes, that's ridiculous. Um, but the fact that you got this light there just beaming there and you see the teeth and you see like him, if he could only fucking get out but he can't. He can't. He's just getting swallowed whole and crushed whole. Uh, awesome, awesome fucking scene as far as like when I was a kid, it scared the shit out of me. I'm not talking about the movie. I'm talking about this scene. It scared the shit out of me because you just got this huge 35 foot shark, like I said, in this tank. And there's, you know, there's nowhere for nowhere for anyone to go. Um, and this guy just gets swallowed whole. So can't remember the character's name but I just call him the Swedish hunter. He's probably not even Swedish. He's something like that. Um, that's my number three. All right, top two, people. Number two for me is the pond scene in the OG. Um, might be my favorite scene from this movie. Um, you got Mike and some other kids in the pond, and you see some girl yelling, shark, shark, shark. And Brody's kind of just kind of walking. And uh, and then you see the fin going towards it. And you see Brody start jogging. And you see this guy in his little paddle boat approaching the kids, talking to him. And while he's approaching them, he's talking to them, uh, the shark comes and knocks him off. And then you get this aerial shot. And this is the first time we see the fucking size of this shark. And it's like, holy shit. Like, that's a tangible shark there. It's, it's not a shark, but it's tangible. It's not fucking CG. That is ridiculous. And look at this guy's face. Um, just fucking petrifying. Um, and this is, you know, you get Mike Brody in shock and, and, and all this stuff again. Um, but the kids witness this, and we witness it from above because of the aerial shot. So just fucking incredibly scary shit. But there can be no only number only one number one, guys. It's pretty obvious. We got to go Quint. Um, this whole movie is just building up to Quint versus the shark. Quint is the ultimate badass. Quint's given the USS Indianapolis speech. He survived that, and he's finally got one that he's never kind of encountered before. You know, I love when uh, Dreyfus asks him, uh, you ever see one do this before? And he just goes, no. You know, it's so fucking good. Uh, but finally, after Dreyfus uh, goes down uh, in the water in his cage, ah, shark. <laughs> uh, goes down the water or goes in this cage and the shark destroys the cage sharks had a fucking enough um, just kind of jumps up on the boat and you get Quint and Brody up there and Quint starts slipping grabs grabs something to hang on and you get that whatever the hell that thing is that 
hits his hand and starts screaming and he's slowly sliding down the boat as the shark's mouth is approaching him or the shark's mouth is waiting for him he's just slowly approaching and you see him right here trying to kind of kick out of there uh but he's sliding he's sliding right into the belly of the beast and the fucking uh the fucking effects here and the sounds are just ridiculous you can hear the crunch as this shark devours quint you know he's just biting him in the legs and biting him in the stomach and quint's spitting up blood and it's just brutal shit and quint you're a badass character but you went down you might have went down you know kind of swinging a little bit uh, but you went down a champ uh and it's the best kill in the franchise uh in my opinion so like i said tell me your favorite kills from the franchise in the comments thanks for watching guys and i will see you next time